Good how's everyone? Evening. How's everyone doing? Let me reposition this so it's a little. There we go. Put, put it close to your mouth. Close to your mouth. Put it in your mouth. Say your motherfucking mouth. Anyway, so Sydney, uh, hey, Epic starts his stream before I do. Um, I usually wait, you know, while we're getting everything together. So uh, yeah, there's not little, dead air time. I'm a little premature, Sydney. Well, no, it's all good. Just in the videos. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm getting a grown folk business. You grown. Just in the videos. So, uh, what's today's hey, kittens. Day? Good, what does it say? It good is. evening. Today is Wednesday, November 14th. I am Dominion. And I am Epic. And welcome to episode 39 of the BGK8 show with Dominion and Epic, exclusively on Vox Power 373. So, listen. So, so you can call in. Please call in. After about 20 minutes of us, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. You can call in. The number is 240-719-2560. Again, 240-719-2560. So call in. We talk about whatever Please it is you like. In. Now, if you say something foolish, we will cut it. Well, yeah, because you know I'm not. Listen, I'm right. not here. For, I, we don't. I, although I'm here for the shit. I'm not here for the shit. I'm not here for the shit. So I'm going to give it up to uh, my good girlfriend on, uh, I can't even think of her name right now, but she's uh, a legend on the bar over scene uh, who always says she's here for the shit. So I'm here for the shit as well. Yes. But. Um, so what's the BGK, what does BGKH stand for? So um, the B stands for black. You know, opposite of white. Blike, as they would say you in know, Jacksonville. Blike. African heritage. Mm-hmm. Something Part of the diaspora. Life. Something in that, that whole thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's what the B stands for. The G? The G is for the gays, honey. The all gay, of the gays. All of the gays. All of the gays. Get into all of the, the gays, gays, honey. Get into all this skin, honey, for the Touch gays. Touch the skin, darling. Touch, Touch it all. all. Get into it. What, what's mm -hmm. the... What's the matter, Pedro? Are you going through some sort of a psychological change? <laughs> Are you going back to being a man? We got it's more venom. Psychological, psychological change. <laughs> a shout out to uh, all of our friends uh, come and gone. Anyway, so uh, the K. The K is for the king. Kinky. kinky, yes, yes. The kinky. So I am getting people? it together for uh, getting it together for ML. I'm pulling together my Luke's, pulling Ugh. together uh, what we're going to do for uh, the show. We got, we are going to do, oh, a, do a performance. Yes, we got to do a performance. We have so plenty of time. We got the, two months. Listen, the wet pocketbooks will make an appearance yes. at MAL. So, uh, yes, I'm going to need folks to be in the house. So, Special K, Deviant, start pulling your looks together. Right. So, we are going to turn it out. Listen, and uh, we've had several, we've had several um, performances of your song, and we had to go ahead and do a couple different things, just Deviant and I. But, again, you weren't there. Oh, like at uh, karaoke? Yes. So we just, you know, it was it was very impromptu. I got to get up early in the morning, it was very, so listen, I can't do no shit. It was very impromptu. It was very mm -hmm. impromptu. But um, but anyway, so that's the, so we, we talk about all that. We talk about the yes. K. So and, and the so H. It's for all of the humans. You folks, y'all, all y'all. So uh, how was your week? <laughs> mm. Thank, first of all, uh, without showing the label, right. Because, you know, they are not paying us any money. Right. We want to thank Deviant for this. Uh, oh, yeah, this. I don't know what they're, if there's something else on the bottom, but anyway. Oh, no, it's just, okay. just words. Uh, we want to thank Deviant for uh, letting us know about uh, this, this particular brand of uh, white sangria. Oh, it's. Uh, it doesn't really say it's a whole lot of 20, Well, no, it's that's 20. That's. You take this number and you double that. That's the proof. So that means this is uh, that's still only less than twenty eight. Yeah. yeah, I mean, thirteen percent alcohol. I mean, it's not. You know. I mean, you're not gonna get toasted. But listen, if but we she's drink good. This though. whole bottle, we might be cute though. So anyway, so your week, the week that was. Um. So the week that was. Uh. So the week that was. Had a few. 
kinks in it, mm -hmm. but um, it, it's been otherwise okay. Kink, to, not kink is in kinky. No, not kink is in kinky, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but well, but then again, one never knows. Mm, yeah, and then mm, I, it depends on how you define take your, that. Take your shirt off. Stay a while. Well, oh, it's, it's my little jacket, but I mean, it's you know, I don't want to, you know. Oh, okay. Uh, you don't have your good girl along. No, I, listen, listen. This dad bod is what it is. So I mean, it's just. <laughs> Ooh, wait a minute. It does. It looks like it's like. Damn. No, your nipples. Listen. They haven't been touched in a minute. Oh. <laughs> they look huge. Somebody touch me. <laughs> Touch me, God damn it! They look huge. Look at that! Oh my God! Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, but the week was good. I mean, you know, I've had some uh, some more family drama with with mm -hmm. my mom and that crap and uh, some uncle stuff. And um, I'm really trying not to stay focused on that. But uh, today was one of those days where I had to go out in the hallway. If any of you work in the office there where there's a cubicle, you have to go out in the hallway, and kind of say what the hell you want to say. Right. You sometimes look, you just don't want to. I'm like, hello, who is this? Just give me one second. I'm going outside in the hallway. That's exactly what I did. First of all, <laughs> do not call me on my job with this foolishness. Right. So that it's one of those type of situations. And um, but other than that, it was good. I mean, work was good. Um, I was very lazy yesterday because I didn't necessarily feel well. Mm -hmm. um, just probably more so mental health, just to kind of lay down. So and you do didn't nothing. feel well. Or no, 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 just the mental health, like just, you know, no. mentally tired. You got a lot going on. I don't need yeah, that kind you of know, foolishness in my life. And um, just wanted to lay down and, and do nothing. But what I was able to do was, again, kept up on some more uh, Walking Dead. So I'm now in season four. Oh, good. Because the damn season three had 16 episodes. I was like, God damn it. But anyway. Um, I did the same thing a uh, year before last with <sighs> Game of Thrones because my coworker convinced me to watch it. And she was like, you got to watch all of the other seasons before you watch this. So I binge watched seasons one through six so that I could be caught up by the time. Well, she had them all on DVD. Okay. So I was put in a DVD and just let the 10 episodes just, just go. Play. And it was good because then I felt like I was fresh with, the, okay. with, with everything that happened. So, and yes, and season eight, the eighth and final season is going to start in April. So, so I, still, I have time to that. catch up with that. So that's yes. the next on my list. Oh, that yeah, you. and Sons of Anarchy and my, I have a whole list. This, this list is like, a, it's a long list, but mm -hmm. Walking Dead is one of them. But it's nine seasons of it. Eight of them are on Netflix and then I got to watch the ninth season, which is currently on. So I'll probably better catch that on, on demand, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. But um, it was, it's pretty good. Um, I'm laughing because I got to work I'm in a season, for those of you, spoiler alert, for those of you who, are, who haven't seen it and you're in season four, there's something that's changing with the, with the Walking Dead. Like it's, it seems like the virus is mutating because it's a virus, whatever it is, and it's mutating. And um, there's a few things that's going on. So it seems like the survivors are catching a cough. And so once they start catching this cough, it's like a cold. And so I was at work today talking to somebody on the phone, and she was like, <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, uh, and I was like, wait a minute. I was like, wait a minute. I was like, wait a minute. Something great going on. So I was a little thrown off. But, I, but you know, it, it was good. And um, so here's a little quotable notable. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to have messed around with somebody that somebody else knows or that was somebody else's ex. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but when the somebody that you mess around is a coworker's ex, it's a little bit more awkward why? Because when you realize who the person is while you're at work sitting there talking about them. Mm -hmm. Oh, to the to the to the ex. <laughs> yes. And you're he's sitting like, yeah, there. His dick got this curve in it and everything. He's like, that sound like Bob. And literally, I was there with a coworker, and I was, and they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is, and we were both like, this. Oh, this is awkward. Which coworker was it? We're gonna leave, leave that nameless. Because well, I don't you already have, said I don't, it. You don't have but so many gay co-workers. Mm, that's not necessarily true. Oh, well, I've only yeah. met the two. Well, anyway. anyway so, sorry. Um, but uh, what happens, what then happened, or the reason why I brought that up is because tonight I get a text message from them. Hey, how are you? And I'm like. The co-worker or no, the other one? The, mm -hmm. the, the ex. And I was like, fine, how are you? It was like, oh, good, just thought about you. And I was like, I was like well, that was nice. Glad to be thought about. Left it alone. Like, I'm trying not to go down that road to say, like, look, look, look. Right. Here's the thing. I, you know, now, I, I really would do it or do it again or something, however you want to look at it. Or <laughs> you've already done it. 
I mean, I'm just saying. But, um, you know, it just, uh, it just wasn't quite, um, I don't think it's that nice to do it again. But anyway. Um, what's Hopefully up, they don't watch the show. Well, if well, if they do at this point, like I didn't say no name, so whoever it is, this could be several people, because you know, there's a crowd. Because once upon I, a time, not long ago, he I was, was a, a hoe. hoe. All right. <laughs> Still had a hoe well, there we go. Good for you. You're not a hoe. You're a hoe-ish. Okay. Sure. All right. So my week, uh, you know what your uncle did? <laughs> hmm. So your uncle calls me and says, uh, hey, how's it going, blah, blah, blah. And whatever he calls, it's, you know, like you know he wants something because he doesn't ever call unless he wants something or something was wrong or whatever. And I'm like, all right, what? So, uh, you know, me and I'm not going to say my cousin's name, uh, tr you know, trying to buy the, buy a house. I'm like, mm-hmm. And I'm half listening, listening, do whatever, doing whatever. And then he says, so um, we're a little short on the down payment. So you think you can lend me some money for the down payment? I'm like, I just spent $22,000 for a funeral. And now, a funeral, I don't want to freak anybody out. The funeral itself was only, like they say, funerals cost about $10,000. The funeral is was ten, nine nine thousand dollars. Burial plots are expensive. Yes, God. So that was where the rest of the twenty. So it's nine thousand for the funeral and thirteen thousand dollars for the burial plot. Yes, anyway, God. I I made twenty two thousand dollars happen from various sources of my own. I ain't borrowed no money, but I'm like, you gonna come to me and see? Here's my thing. You you still a little sore from the corner the corner stroll? I just wanna. I mean, okay. I mean, I, I'm here to support you. I'll give. I, I, you know, I just take Epsom salt baths. Okay. Tonight. All right. Okay. All right. But I'm like, sound like you need to get a. I didn't say any of this because I was only half listening at first, and then you know how you're not paying attention to a conversation, then you play it back in your mind. You're like, what? <laughs> did he just ask did me for some me? money? Like, what the fuck? Did you I was like, no, I do not have any money to lend. And uh, he says, oh well, I understand. He said, he said, yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he says, so uh, uh, your cousin told me about this thing called GoFundMe. So I'm going to create a GoFundMe and call it the, uh, the building fund. And he said he know. <laughs> he said he knows a couple of people that <laughs> plays for the Washington Redskins. <laughs> So they were going to see. He was going to see if he could get them to donate to the building fund. And I'm like, uh, okay, well, good luck with that. Click. So to the congregation, I just want to make sure you all, there's a plate going around. Please donate to the building fund. Right. <laughs> I'm going to send you a GoFundMe for that. Because listen, I've always, I am always like this. Like, A friend of ours, and he's, he has not made any uh, qualms about this. One of our brothers who lives out west had a roommate who turned out to be completely batshit insane, and they got into a verbal and physical altercation, and now our brother can't go back to that house, but, you know, that took him by surprise. So now he needs to raise the money to find someplace else to live. And I donated to that. Okay. Because that's a completely unexpected thing. But I remember, I've, I've recalled at least two people or, who are my Facebook friends who didn't ask me personally, but just asked all of their Facebook friends uh, to donate to their down payment. So basically, they wanted to buy a house, but they didn't have enough money for the down payment. So I'm like, sounds like you need to get a smaller house or wait until you can afford the down payment. Because if you already... At the very beginning of this process, are having issues, are having issues, and don't have enough money to make it happen, then this does not bode well for your ability to pay that mortgage. Ooh, that mortgage is gonna look a little crazy every month. Mm -hmm. So uh, no, mm -mm. so I don't do none of that. All right. Okay. So my sister got out of the hospital, so she's Yay. home now. So 
she got home on. Um, hi, hi, sister. In case you're watching, I don't know if you said her name before. Did we say her name? Yeah, her name was Kendra. Uh, well, yeah. not, you know. Yeah. Hey, Kendra. Uh, I mean, you know that. But I mean, yeah, I know we've it, said but it yeah. on the okay. show before. Yes. Right. Um, yeah. So she got home and climbed them four flights of stairs, and I was like, "All right." I mean, I went up with her. So she, you know. <laughs> like, all right, girl, I'm standing here while you get to the top of the stairs. Just holler down. No, I mean, I went up with Throw her, but down. I'm like, you need to. Yeah. So she'll be moving into the family house. Okay. Oh, speaking of. Um, Shows the binge watch. Uh, did you watch Super Drags? I did not watch. I watched. I tried to watch the first episode, but I watched. I wound up watching Dancing Queen, mm. Alyssa Edwards. Oh, she yeah. has. A, she okay, has yeah, an eight yeah. Yeah, episode, but I, I saw the and I was like, it's stupid as fuck. Yeah, like I was like, uh, but it's still this. It's still kind of funny. It's so when I was I was first watching it because Azimut came and stayed for the weekend. So he had that on, and I was listening to it in the background, and it seemed kind of funny, but I wasn't really watching it. So when I sat down to watch it, I was like, this isn't quite as funny as I thought it was. Mm-mm. I mean, it's they're really trying hard. It was, okay. Every stereotypical. Have you ever, you, well, you, you've gone to a drag show, and the drag queen is, is just one non sequitur and one innuendo and pun and double entendre after another. Imagine an entire cartoon built around that. Exactly. Which can be kind of funny because sometimes, I mean, it's just some funny shit. Right. Because uh, one of the drag queens is, uh, uh, one of the super drags is um, Shangela. And uh, I think, is one, it? yeah, the black one is Shangela. Is, I, well, that's Shangela's voice anyway. Okay. She's not playing Shangela. And RuPaul is in it and Willem. He's playing the, he's playing the, the one on the, TV, the television screen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of. I thought they were Spanish names, but I could, I don't know. Well, no. So, what it is, is apparently the show was produced like in Mexico or something. Because, like, some of the subtitles are in Spanish or something. I just, so yeah, it's I just, just weird. Yeah. It, so, I mean, yeah. it's something to do. It, yeah. But I did watch Dancing Queens. Dancing Queens was kind of good. Okay. It was actually, it was a pretty decent show. But it was in the, in the same vein as like uh, the Dancing Dolls, whatever that show was called, the Dancing Dolls. With mm-hmm. the, so it was the same thing because, you know, Alyssa has a dance studio in Texas. And so it was kind of a lot of that. But then talk about her family stuff as well. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't bad. Cool. So my story of the week is uh, this new Amazon headquarters. Mm. So... It's going to be foolishness and fuckery. It's going to be a terrible thing, ultimately. But it's here now. Nothing we can do about it, so I'm going to ride the wave. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I need to get my certifications together. Because I don't know that I'm necessarily going to go to work for Amazon itself, but they said that the average job is going to start at $150,000. So there is no, this is not a fulfillment center that they're building. So this is, you know, mid-level consultant kind of work. So I feel like not only are they're going to, they're going to hire 25,000 people, mm-hmm. some of which they're going to import, but I feel like a number of them or we'll a significant most, uh, percentage, or if not most of them, will be from here. What that's going to do is create a drain uh, of other people. So it's going to turn it into... Um, an employee's market. Right. Because people are going to be desperate. Well, we're not desperate, but, you know, they're going to be willing to pay more because there's going to be a shortage of qualified people. Also, I definitely need to move. I mean, I could stay in D.C. because people are going to want to do that, but I just don't want to stay in that neighborhood. I want to go ahead and move, get my house in PG County, because let me tell you how this is going to go down. First of all, they're building it in Crystal City, which I didn't know. I thought it was going to be like out. You would think is, that it would have been in, in Maryland because, again, you have a larger land. It's going to be right be across cheaper. the street. Essentially, right across the street from Pentagon National State. no National Airport okay. because they're literally building a bridge from the building that they're buying or having built. I think they're bu- just taking over and adding on to some property that's already there and building a bridge directly to the airport. And they're calling it the Crystal Bridge or some shit like that. And um, 
So property value there is going to skyrocket. Right. So this is going to be crazy. As that property skyrockets, people are going to be looking at even more so than they do now. They're going to be looking at uh, D.C., which already has high rents. Uh, and, uh, but where I live, that's, that's really going to be a catalyst for change in that neighborhood. Right. Because you know, Like faster change. Because, you know, councilmen and uh, congressmen and House and senators um, can't really afford to, you know. We'll get to that in a yeah. minute because that was foolish. Can't really afford but, to live. Uh, you, I'm, you're looking at places like Montgomery County and especially PG County where there's a pretty good infrastructure, but the property values are lower because, you know, a lot of places still haven't fully recovered from the housing market. Mm -hmm. So those properties are going to go through the roof, too. Mm -hmm. So I want to move and be in my house before that area becomes like a house now that I'm looking at. Houses that I'm looking at now are in the 350 to 500K range. I do not want to spend $500,000 on a house. I'd much rather spend Oof. 350 to 400. But let's say I'm looking at 500. That, even, even that house is $400,000 now, three years from now, that house is definitely going to be at least 600. As all of these people start to say, oh, well, if I live in PG County, then my commute isn't going to be but incredible so mm -hmm. getting to, because, you know, people aren't going to want to move all the way out to Gainesville and, you know, Stafford and all that shit. You know, they're going to, because a lot of those places are already saturated. Gainesville, Maryland? Gainesville, Virginia. Oh, I was like, what? Yeah. Okay. So um, I need to be in a position. I need to position myself. Uh, professionally and financially to uh, take care of that. The last thing I want to talk about is this foolishness where Congress people are saying that um, they, can't, they afford. can't afford the rent in D.C. Now, I will start by saying that the first person who started complaining about this was newly, elect newly elected Senator, uh, Congress person, Alexandria Ocasio, I can't remember what her hyphenated right. last name is, She's a freshman senator, freshman congressman who wasn't like a consultant or whatever. So I get that she's saying until she starts working, she don't really have the money to afford twenty five hundred, three thousand dollar a month rent. And I get that for someone who's just starting out. But they were talking about other people who were saying they don't have, these are people who are already in Congress who were talking about they can't afford the expensive rents in D.C. And I'm like, but your average your, starting salary. No, not average, the base. There we go. The base, Alexandra Ocasio, when she starts getting that paycheck annualized, it's going to be $175,000 or so whatever that works out to every two weeks or every month when they get paid, that's how much she's going, that's the gross. So net is going to be something less than that. Right. But she's still going to be making more than enough. So I'm not faulting her for saying that, yeah, I mean, you know, everybody doesn't come to Congress with a nest egg of, you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 to live on until those checks start rolling in. Right. But once you get here, you know, and, you know, like people are talking about, um, they were sharing, a, you know, this is a, these are our lawmakers talking about getting sharing an apartment with people. And we know one senator was talking about uh, he was living in someone's basement apartment. I was like, girl. Before taxes, that is a, a based on 24 pays, mm -hmm. if it's every two weeks, before taxes, that is $72.91. Yeah, so you just take two thirds two weeks. of that. Right. So. Mm, Time, yeah, 0 0.67. Six, Again, that is forty eight hundred dollars. What? That's that that doesn't seem right because I'm, you said two thirds point six seven. You know, wait a minute, one seventy five zero 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 divided by twenty four times. Did you say? Yeah, I just want to make sure I was we, the math was right. The cap. Well, I was just making sure because that doesn't. 
Because if you take that times 0 0.67, 48, 85 every two weeks. Right, but that's, a, I mean, that just doesn't seem right because times two. $9,700 a month. Yeah, so you should be good. Let me explain something to you. My salary is nowhere near that, and even at half of that, as far as what the what the rent would be, uh, you, you can make it. You just can't live in D.C. You got to move outside. Move outside of D.C. No, you got to live in D.C. You can't be a, you can't be like, oh, I couldn't make this vote because the metro broke down. Because most of them live like close. That's by. fine. Then take the metro runs out to PG. The metro runs out into Montgomery County. The metro runs out into you know what I mean. It just depends. Yeah, you got to figure out how to make metro it. Metro foolishness. You know they cutting all the fucking yellow line, and so my commute is going to be doubled. But anyway. My point so, is, you make a hundred. You know, you girls need to you, you need account. to you get need to get uh, do a better account. with your money because I'm just saying if I lived in Bumblefuck Iowa and I came to visit my congressman and he was like, yeah, I'm throwing you know you let me just drop you know whatever and you go to the basement of somebody else's house, I'm like. Well, I'm not expecting you to floss and live, you know, in, you know, some mansion with solid gold, whatever, but at least have your own apartment, not somebody's basement on Capitol so, Hill. So, first off, I don't really see the, the, the whole point of coming to my house as a congressman or as a senator. To, to my but, I mean, to I me, live. it's just... That's me. It's just... You know, maybe that's why I am where I am, but I was just, I just feel like, you know, at a certain level, you know, you got to... Your surroundings need to reflect your income or, or your, your, your status. And if you, I mean, there's very few people who make the laws for this country. There's only 500 and, shit, I guess, how many Congress, how many, there's 100 senators and 400 and, let's just say it's 450. I cannot remember exactly what the number is. There's less than 600 people total who make the laws for this country. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like you should live in a, a nice place and to me living in somebody's basement is But nice, nice is relative too. It's relative to the person. I guess. I mean, you live in a yes. nice neighborhood. Yes. But I ain't living in somebody's basement. I'm also not a senator or a congressperson. I, I and I get that. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is, well, I, I think we're saying the same thing. We are. But okay. Any snooch. So let's get into this show. <clears throat> a couple of things. First of all, American Horror Story is tonight, the season finale. Garbage. I'm over it. I'm watching it because I've invested my time and energy to this uh, thus far. You have been, you know, I, I am a American Horror Story fan. So you, I, are, I, you, 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 you are you almost like, you know, this Janet Jackson thing, you know, it's this unearned sense of fabulousness based on what I don't know. Unearned sense of fabulousness. I'm going to need you all to remember those lines, uh, remember those words. Please do. I said. Unearned sense of fabulousness. I mean, just like with Jenny no, no, no. Jackson, y'all no, no, no. are giving, no, no, no. You, no, no, no. giving this show you said all it. of this Just shine. like you just said. You said it. You said what you said. You I said did, it. and I'm not taking it back. I, I, okay, I get that. I'm just but saying. But I'm going to go ahead and finish reporting on the rest of American Horror Story. That's what I'm going to do. You Please do from that. From this unearned sense of fabulousness. Okay. I'm listening. I'm waiting. Did you so, like my shirt? The question is, <clears throat> where, what is really going on? Yes, what is going on? What is on? really going on? And What's so happening? I come across this article that was actually uh, in, uh, online in Variety, as a matter of fact. And so there's some gossip that they were talking about, about how season eight could possibly be paired with another season. Mm -hmm. Like it could be, th the article was basically talking about how American Horror Story could change the face of television drama. Because it could, it could have, it, because it's one of the first shows that have had, that has had non, just to use the same word, non-secuitous yes. links to other shows and seasons for whatever reasons. And it is, has also been a show that has had several unanswered or dangling strings or plots that are available that seem to tie into other seasons. Yes. So if that's the case, one of the options was to either A, 
link it to or, or extend it to another season so that this could have been the the first part of the series and yeah. season nine could have been the second part because they, when it, when seasons eight and nine were greenlit, they were greenlit at the same time with the right. studios. So that's one, one thing. The second thing is that there could be several different ways how the, the, the story could end. A, it could be that, uh, what's her name? Uh, Mallory is gonna go back in time and actually change the past, therefore changing the future. That's a possibility. It could also be... Which would be disappointing. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. then it, mm -hmm. it means the entire emotional journey, everything that we went through, learning about these people is for nothing. That's, a, that's lazy writing. If you do all of this and say, oh, well, now we have this, this character who has... I mean, we've met Mallory before. Right. So Mallory yeah. is not a new character. So now, you know, we're just suddenly establishing that she can go back in time and change the past because it's convenient to this plot. Right. Because there were times in other storylines where if, if, if she had that power or that power was known to be a thing in the universe in which this story exists, the ability to go back and change events in the past would have been helpful. So, well, so to me, so, that is extremely lazy writing if that's what they did. So that's an option. Mm -hmm. The other option is that, um, what the hell is Coco really there for? Like that your seems... powers of glu being gluten, uh, being a gluten detector, it, it could be one of those things where she has hidden some other talent or some other power from Coco, and she could be the key to something else. Yeah. So because I've always wondered that why might the, be why more. The fuck now are you that there? will be interesting if that you know you figure out some clever way that even if she doesn't have any other power other than gluten detection. You know, maybe Michael is, you know... That is the he has stupidest like the, power he has, on the planet. Maybe Michael has the world's worst case of celiac disease. <laughs> they, Listen, you know, they, Michael must be related to Zeus Onyx, who all of a sudden is trying to become you leave free. Zeus, leave Zeus alone! Okay, all right, whatever. <laughs> so, anyway, that, that could be, it could be that as an option as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing is... There were all these different rumors about people showing back up into the set again. But they were never They were rumors, confirmed. so let me be clear. They were absolutely rumors. But mm -hmm. I'm a little pissed off because I'm like, well, where the hell is, is, is Marie Laveau or, or Angela Bassett? Like, girl, mm -hmm. I'm going to usually show up and do, be something fabulous. Also, a lot of things don't add up because uh, what's the other black girl's name that the, became like Oprah? She's, she's now the, yeah. Right, but so the whole thing where she sold out uh, the coven and Michael killed all of them, occurred only, uh, what was it, a year or so before the apocalypse. Yes. So that's not enough time, because when, when that season started, her and her black gay son, which we've never talked about before, so who is he actually? Because uh, maybe he always existed, but they established... She, I think she may have just bought his way into the... Yeah, but he was... The outpost. But no, he said that he was her mother and he had this whole frustration with her and everything that read, that was written and acted out as if they had, you know, this whole lifetime mother and gay son So that very history. well could have been... That very well could have been, been the case. It also could... It also would have been something that, that didn't necessarily need to be talked about, just played off of the stereotypical gay son that, not that's accepting another parent. another poorly written thing to me. Well, I'm not, because it seems I, it seemed well, unnecessary. And we're not judging the, time, the writing of it. I am. Okay, well. I am because I'm entertained. I mean, you know. But there, do you, I, So when I was in, even starting as early as like the fifth or sixth grade, we, you know, But if some read, things are not integral to the plot, then does it yes, really? But yes. that's not really integral to the plot. But then why do it though? That doesn't but that doesn't make sense to do. It's things just a distraction. Just, Stop being logical with it. No, just it's entertainment. No. It is entertainment. No. Uh, no. Anyway, listen. So it doesn't listen, make sense that listen. in the year all I'm saying to y'all is because she, she was tune in tonight to, to see how the hell this is going to end she, while Dominion is stuck on the fact that no, it doesn't make any sense no. to him. Tune that, in tonight. The black to see woman how this was end. established to be like la, Oprah. La, la, she la, was supposed la. to be um, like la, this billionaire. La, 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 and so she went from being a voodoo priestess to a billionaire that's in how a she year. Became, that's how she became, she made that deal with uh, Papa Legba. 
off of a third because what they said at the end of last week's episode is that that you, was a pop leg your 13 episode deal has been greenlit right so you mean over the course of 13 episodes she managed to make a billion dollars and become an oprah style star enough that she had a hundred million dollars to buy her way into this no nah. well if this you doesn't did, make if, any if your sense. 13 episodes did that well your payout for the next contract would actually be a lot bigger. not a billion dollars what depending on how what the ratings were like you, See, this is what happens when you believe in Janet Jackson. You just anything is possible. But she's alive. <laughs> is she though? And Ella's dead. <gasps> How dead I have. Don't you spill my good liquor. I made sure to. Don't you spill my good liquor. I made sure the lid was. Now I love me some Ella. I have half a mind. Airmail special is everything. I just, it just doesn't, uh, so much of what happened this season doesn't make sense and isn't tied together. And I mean, it's the nature of television that typically, you know, you don't, you don't have an. Uh, <laughs> yes, in life, people die with things unfinished. But in, you know, on a television show, you typically try to wrap things up. And they got a lot of things to wrap up or explain. And if they're if they're going to do it like as a second season, that would be cute. It, it you know? could be. And I, and I, I mean, I think that would be a good thing. You say, yeah, we didn't get to all of this because you know this first season was the apocalypse, and you know the next season is you know after the apocalypse. And and it very well could be. So we we'll have to see what goes on. But I'm definitely going to be tuned in as soon as I walk in the door after I get my wings. And go sit down and watch. Yeah, I got to get season. something to eat. Yeah, because I'm, I'm going to call them as soon as we leave out of the studio. Mm-hmm. I need to go get some of this. There is a Tony, um, Tony Luke's, the um, cheesesteak spot. I don't think I've ever heard. Tony Luke's? Mm-hmm. Well, there's one at the Pentagon. They make the best chicken cheesesteak. And when I eat that, I know that I'm not going to eat anything for a long time because, you know, I'm you'd be sitting there at the office like, <laughs> got a whole page full of the letter K. She was like, K. <laughs> right. Ooh, okay. Um, All right, so Michelle Obama becoming. Um, listen, did you get your, I downloaded uh, my copy. I haven't, I, 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 I haven't downloaded it yet because I already bought my two books. Okay. For uh, this month, but it's on my queue for next month. So I, I haven't listened and to it's, it And yet. she narrates the, her own audio book, yes. which is good. yes. I still feel like I, I'm going to download the audio book because essentially I'm getting that for free because, you know, I have paid the credit credits. Not, yeah. I'm going to buy the hard copy just, you know, because, you know, support the system. Well, but then the other part of that, too, is it's like, God bless you in trying to find a hard copy because the pre-orders were off the chain. And that's this whole, um, this book is actually poised to become the biggest selling book of 2018. Yeah. The pre-orders alone, on top of the fact that Oprah then made her the book club of the month. Right. Um, and then also, um, she's just, her book tour and everything Actually, she's going to be in D.C. You know, she's going to be her this weekend. Tour, yes, but you know her book tour, the tickets were going for as much as $2,800. I'm listen, like, I wish I would. Listen. I wish. I, I mean, listen, I love Michelle Obama. God knows I do. Yeah, but and make your money the best no way you can. Way but I'm not paying 28 I'm not doing that. That I would pay 27 I don't even, I mean, listen. like, even if they said to me the tickets are $100, I'd be like. I wasn't trying to pay 1000 to see Janet and meet her. I was not going to do that. 50% of that is going to some sort of a charity. There is no way. Because she, between her and Barack, they got a $60 million advance for their two books. So there's no way that I would see why I would, listen, get your coins and it's sold out, but you won't see me in the audience. I'm like, see if I can find that shit on YouTube or I'll watch her interview on OWN Network or something because there is no way I'm going to pay that much money to see her. You know, Michelle, I love you and, you know, like I say, get your coins, just not for me. Are y'all going to call in? Like, we've been told y'all about right. dialing. Are, are you going to Um, Listen, Sean, call in. Like, what the hell? I mean, what the hell? Right. Sean, Real Michael, call special. in. Call in. Like, Ask- what y'all doing? Like, I mean, y'all, we gave y'all a number. Y'all going to call in or what? What y'all doing? What, y- what y'all doing? We asked y'all to call in. Tell, uh, special tell Kai to call in and he can ask me directly what I'm sipping on. Yeah, I mean, like, come on. Like, we could tell you. Like, right, what, you know, sipping on some scissor. 240 2560 Make it happen. Mm-hmm. Like, we, come on now. 877 9311. I mean, like, I mean, really? yeah, it's not that deep. Right. 
So yeah, so um, yeah, twenty seven fifty, never, yeah. not not as long as. But I'm on but this she'll time. be here Saturday, and I'm wondering how that's gonna work at the Verizon Center because and I some uh, some friends of mine got tickets and she was like, oh, I paid like two hundred dollars for my tickets, and I was like, well, good for you. Even two hundred dollars, I'm like, um, you listen, that would be like a birthday treat, and I need to get my dick sucked for it or something. I am not. I won't pay that for Janet. I've paid one hundred and seventy five dollars, but I'm not paying two hundred dollars. Really? Yeah, I have. Hmm. No, no, no. I'm saying I'm surprised you wouldn't have paid more. For, and I no, no, I don't mean that as I don't mean that no, no, as no. a shade at all. Because I, I feel like for a concert, maybe three hundred dollars or something doesn't seem unreasonable for a concert. So listen, I, I my whole thing is like I, there's a on one of her tours. It was the number one, the up close and personal. Mm-hmm. There was this package where you would pay like a thousand dollars or whatever. You could have got backstage to actually meet her. Mm-hmm. I'm not paying a thousand. Like I'm not gonna do that. Like, no girl, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> That's not I'm sorry. like girl, Janet. I love you. Like I really do. Like I, I do. I even found my scrapbook that has the pictures of you that I cut out of Teen Beat and all the other magazines that have the pictures of that. Yes. I really have that. Okay. And you were so straight. But anyway, I found. But I'm not paying. The, I wasn't doing that. No, no. And in fact, <laughs> actually, after that concert, I got to meet both your dancers, Gil being one of them, and also uh, the redhead. I can't remember her name right now. But listen. So, no, no, I'm getting listen. closer to you. Girl, I'm going to bump into you somewhere. And when I do, I'm going to bump. Listen, I'm probably going to pass out because I'm not going to have anything to say. But I, I'm getting closer. I sound like a stalker, though, don't I? You do. I do sound like very stalkerish, but. You sound like Jack when he was in the bushes that time. We're looking for um, Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon. Uh, but anyway. So. Because I, I, I still remember. I mean, I grew up in this area. People who grew up in this area remember the Cap Center. Mm-hmm. The first concert I ever, well, we're not counting the concert. I had, I had to take my sister to see the Jets. I got a crush on you. Yeah. So, uh, but the con- first concert I ever went to for myself, they used to call them the show because, you know, it was Dougie Fresh. Ah. Mary J. Blige, Heavy D and the Boys, a couple of go-go bands. I mean, it was like. Eight or ten acts. It was like a six-hour concert. I'm serious. You got there like seven o'clock What's up, and, in the evening and didn't leave till like two or three in the morning. And for all of those people, it was like forty dollars. This was in the eighties. Yeah. And now, you know, just to see Mary J. Blige, I'm sure it's at least a hundred dollars. Listen, you know I love me some Mary. I'm. A, let me just be clear. I love me some Mary, mm-hmm. but I'm not. And I, listen, face be beat all the time. Hair be done. Listen, she wears a nice little boot. Now, she can't walk in them because them knees is crooked. And she can't dance in them. So she's Jeez. dancing like somebody's old, elderly, crippled aunt who put their walker down and they can't find it. They're trying to tiptoe to find the walker <laughs> to go pick it up after they had some drinks. That's how she walk. And yes. then you put music to it. That's how she dance. But I'm not paying that much money to see Mary. Like, you, I love her. I, listen, I, lo- I, I have a, she is, you know, that's my girl. In my head, like that, she reminds me of my sister. Her sister, my sister's birthday is the same date, January 11th. Mm-hmm. You know, I, listen, I get it, but, girl, I'm not paying that much money to see you. Like, I'm not doing that. But I love you. I do. I, I do. I love you. I'm glad you got your walk, your star on the Walk of Fame. I, I love you. Right. You can call in, too, 240-719-2560. You can. Yo, this is Mary. So uh, midterms elect midterm elections. So okay. So the reason why I brought this up is because um, I wanted people to understand what the demographics were on this uh, last election. And people always talk about how it their vote doesn't make a make a difference, mm-hmm. and how you know there was a white male agenda, if you will. Mm-hmm. According to these statistics that were pulled up from the Pew Research Org uh, website, there is a, one, there was a gender, gender, race, and educational divides where, excuse me, between um, gender you had 47% of men that voted Democrat and 59% of women that voted Democrat. And these were the larger percentages of between ver- voting Democrat versus Republican. Now. As far as the race between white, black, Hispanic, and Asian, 44% of the white of whites voted Democrat, whereas 54% voted Republican. Okay, but 90% of the black vote 
was Democratic, 69% of the Hispanic vote was Democratic, and 77% of the Asian vote was Democratic. Listen, we make a difference. Yeah. All of us that are part of this community, all, everything that is under that whole POC, we make a difference. And so I need you all to realize that every single time that you say that it doesn't matter, you are, you are lying to yourself and you're lying to others because it does make a difference. You know, the, I think I said this before, but the biggest indication of how important your vote is is how desperate these white men are to take it away from you. Listen. If your vote didn't count, then Chris Kobach, who was the uh, uh, Republican gubernatorial candidate in Kansas, wouldn't have built his whole career on trying to disenfranchise black voters. Uh, ben or, or Kemp, whoever the, the guy's name is that's running for governor in Georgia, wouldn't have spent the last six months in his position as the, I think it's Secretary of State or Director of Elections or whatever it's called, Secretary trying to disenfranchise black voters. Mm -hmm. If those things were not important, then they uh, wouldn't have been trying so hard to take away that vote because they understand where history is going. Mm -hmm. And history, the, the <laughs> whole thing is, the population and the demographics of this country are actually changing. Latino right. voters, let me tell you something. You guys showed up and showed out in record numbers. Yeah, and um, even if you don't do anything else, white European Americans are just not being born at a, a high enough rate to replace the population and maintain that majority. People of color, especially blacks and Hispanics, are populating faster. Yes. And also, interestingly enough, in the House, the, the House has changed. Yeah. And the makeup of the House has changed. Yeah. It, is, it, it has gone from predominantly white male mm -hmm. to actually female. Well, not. It's still mostly white male, I think. Well, but the percentage has gone down. Percentage has gone down, but the people that have replaced them, mm -hmm. there are so many different females that are coming. And into the house, also, into the house. Um, there were so many younger people elected that the average Listen. age of this Congress is ten years younger than Congress's past, which is good. Listen, record numbers for. Latinos, rec that 2.2 million people that actually registered to actually vote. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it was an 8.4 increase over 2016. Mm -hmm. So again, please, please, please understand that every single vote counts. Oh, and you know, I found out I was wrong about something. Last week, I, we were talking about Maxine and Trump's taxes and how he could fight it. Come to find out, he can't. Because the, because Congress can't, doesn't, if they wanted your taxes, they don't ask you for your taxes. They go to the IRS, and the IRS is compelled to give, give them over. Taxes. Okay. So when I was like, oh, well, there's going to be this fight over Trump's taxes, there is no fight. Because on January 1, Maxine Waters, can, as the chair of the Finance ah. Committee, can write to uh, the, IR, the head of the IRS and say, I would like to have copies of the tax returns of Donald J. Hey, Trump, Trump for the past X number of years, and they are required to turn them over. So they, they don't have to ask him about nothing. He can't get involved in that process. He can't say, you can't have access to any of that. There's none of that. Listen, there was a meme I just saw the other day. Oh, about Maxine. He, looking about through the, the window. Door. Yes. <laughs> Donald Trump is and knocking on the is door there. and he, she's looking through the peephole. She's like, like hey. Because she's coming. She's coming. She's and coming. She, she gives zero fucks. She's coming. Listen, I'm, I'm here for it. Um, but anyway, uh, that was just one of the things I wanted to bring up as well about the, uh, let the, pop the importance of actually voting and how the demographics are actually changing. Um, mm -hmm. Another thing I wanted to add is, you know, initially I was a little skeptical about what could be accomplished in this Congress, but even though the Senate retain, ma re maintain under Republican control, you have to think that, remember, over the past decade, the Republicans spent an inordinate amount of time gerrymandering these districts. Mm -hmm. 
to sort of give themselves a permanent majority. And even with that, Democrats won and flipped seats in these, in some of these gerrymandered districts. So, you know, for those of you who do not understand how a bill becomes law, it has to be passed in the House. Schoolhouse Rock. Then it has to be passed in the Senate. Schoolhouse Rock. Typically, what happens is if they come up with a version of a bill in the House and they come up with a version of the bill in the Senate, then they go to a conference committee where they come up with like a compromise bill and then they move it forward. Well, because now these, a lot of these districts are not red or blue, they're purple, the Republican senator, because your, your congressman might be Democratic, but your, your senator might still be Republican. Right. But because your senator cannot now just be like, oh, I don't have to listen to these Democrats. Bec now, if your state is purple, you have to listen to these people. So things like affordable health care, um, automatic voter registration at the age of 18, which to me just seems like a no brainer if you believe in, you know, everyone's right to vote. So, you know, this Democracy. is a great thing. And we're continuing to hear, you know, there was the big blue wave on It Tuesday. wasn't a big blue wave. It was, I mean, the big was, blue wave is not just, uh, I'm talking about nationwide. Well, so yeah. they, there was enough of blue wave to flip the, flip the yes. house. And then, um, you know, we're continuing to hear, uh, you know, there were a number of races that were too close to call, both the House and the Senate. Yesterday, um, uh, Kirsten Sinema uh, yes, won her Arizona. Democratic that was Senate Arizona, race. Right? Yeah. yeah. And so she'll be the first bisexual, openly bisexual person openly. I'm going to quote something from um, <laughs> sex, sex in the City. Bisexuality is a stopover into gay land, but that's, that's yes. Carrie's character. But Right. I'm just but, saying, you I, know, I so we're, we were continuing to, by drips and drabs, there was another um, congressperson uh, in New Jersey who, when all of the votes were counted, he defeated his, uh, congress his uh, Republican congressional um, opponent. So, you know. Let's not forget, we are still trying to figure out with, what's going on with the Florida. With Florida. And, and well, we're, we're still figuring out. In Georgia, we're still figuring out the Senate gubernatorial, uh, I mean, the gubernatorial race. In Florida, we're figuring out both the gubernatorial race as well as the Senate race. Yes, yes. So we, we, we just got to see. We should know by tomorrow, as a matter of fact, I think. Was it Thursday? Supposed to, they were supposed no, to No, that, was it Florida? I think one of those places they extended the vote line, the deadline to, uh, to vote. I thought it was. Not okay. vote, but count the votes. To count the votes, okay. But that's fine. Um, but listen. Every single vote counts. Every single vote counts. Please. And every Listen, let's not just let this election or one election feel like it, you, people feel like one election is more important than the other. All of them Every are election is critically All of important, them are important. And they're, each one is important because the issues that, you know, you face continue to, this country faces, continues to change. Yes. And, you know, you can't be like, oh, well, you said this last election was important. Yeah. It was. It was. And As it is still this is. One. Yeah. As is the election Listen, every two years. Pay attention to your officials and the and what they're doing because a lot of them are trying to rise up through the ranks. And these are the officials that are going to actually start pushing the policies and pushing the laws and pushing the bills right. to go through that become law and that become federal, that become national. And so, you know, there are opportunities for you, you know, for those who say, well, you know, voting doesn't count what well, you know why your vote why you feel like your vote doesn't count is because you don't get involved in the process because senator or betwixt congress people um just a little bit but i don't this isn't my favorite no but it's not but i still have a button. it is because it's oh a little God. stronger um oh because congress people are um, run every two years they're always back in their district holding meetings go to those meetings cut up well don't cut up because you know some of you girls will not act <laughs> but go and make your voice heard. Your congressperson needs to know what it is that you believe in. Yeah. You know, you can't, you know, you have to do more than just, you know, expressing your frustration on Facebook. Get involved in your, uh, the political process on the local level. You know, your state has a, legis has a legislature there are representatives that you know you have influence on and a lot of those uh 
statewide and local races, you know, at the county level and the city level have a lot more impact on your life on a day to day basis than, you know, what's happening. You think about um, this whole thing with Amazon, you know, they the politicians in New York state negotiated that without any input from this is in New York City where this this thing is going to be. But they completely excluded the New York City Council from this, the New York State Legislature from this. So this really was a deal that de Blasio and Cuomo hmm. worked. Hmm. And they say, oh, it's going to help the city. Most of the people, those, those jobs, they say they're going to start out at $150,000. No shade to anybody that lives in Long Island City. Hey, Kendra. In Queens. Is that Kendra? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. hey, Kendra. Okay. Um, most of those people that live in Long Island City aren't people that make $150,000. So how is that headquarters ultimately going to affect them? You say, oh, well, yeah, tertiary businesses. But yeah, okay, so you're going to open more Starbucks. But that's not a long-term uh, path to viability. Yeah. You know, when you and I were growing up, a job at Starbucks or McDonald's was a cute little entry job. Yeah. You know, now it's people that have worked at McDonald's for like 10, 15 years. And they're trying to retire. Right. How are you going to retire on McDonald's? I mean, there ain't but so many manager positions. I mean, ain't so many fries that need to be made. Anywho. No, All right, let's wrap this shit we up. We did not have to bring that down. So, um, I'm just, okay. How many jobs are there at McDonald's? Listen. You the cashier, you work the fries, or you make the burgers. I mean, it ain't but so, you know, clearly ain't nobody working the shake machine because the shake machine is always fucking broke. Let me tell you something. How I'm so upset about that damn. <laughs> I go to get my damn milkshake. Oh, my Can God. Get, you listen, that one time when it's I'm not like, working. you know, my, you know uh, my, my blood sugar numbers are good. So I was like, you know, I'm going to get a McFlurry. The McFlurry machine is broken. Sorry, well, sorry. bitch, the fuck? Yeah. Anyway, listen. so wrap it up. Um, Walking Dead, please check it out. Um, I'm already sucked into that. That's just my own thing. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm you know, I don't deal it. with zombies. I don't fuck with none of that. It's really not even about the zombies. That's are like, voodoo. The, the, and I don't fuck with none of that. <laughs> the zombies are really not even integral to the story, <laughs> but they are in the sense that they force them to make the decisions about certain things. But again, it's about the interaction of the people and the stuff that's mm-hmm. going on. So, but yeah, that's that's on my list for right now. Um, what else did I get ready to say? Oh, so Jill Scott. Did you all see the Jill Scott thing? Listen, the way you kids carry on about Jill Scott's, clearly you all are basic as fuck. Because did she, yes. So she pretended, she, me, she mimed out sucking dick on a microphone, but okay. First of all, y'all clearly have never listened to Jill Scott's lyrics, for one. And two, she, she's a grown-ass woman who... Simulate, simulated dick sucking on stage and the way you kids are carrying on I'm like well y'all are basic because I saw it I was like okay that's cute but why are you getting so excited about it what do you think listen I mean it was cute but Jill get your life girl right I mean I, I'm here for it if you I wanna, need y'all to get y'all life yeah and stop get your being, life Jill so. and like let it and, and you know I think her response was like What's the big deal? She's like, I simulate a lots of things on stage. Right, all listen the time. to her lyrics. And the lyrics are like, listen, getting in the way. <laughs> she simulates fight. Because <laughs> getting in the way. <laughs> right. Which is still one of my favorites. But uh, yeah. Sister this Honey my, Girl. I need you. To, I don't think you don't understand. <laughs> you're going to have to understand. He's my man now. All right. What mm-hmm. you had is gone. Right. I think it's sweet. I think Queen it's sweet. shouldn't swing. But you know <laughs> what I mean. <laughs> But I'm about to take my earrings off and, and get, get me some Vaseline. Vaseline. Like, she's really trying to get into all that. Right. So, anyway, um, it's good. But anyway, so the BGK8 show streams live on Wednesdays uh, on VoxWave.com from 9.15 to 10.15 p.m. Eastern and 6.15 to 7.15 p.m. Pacific. Episodes are available on YouTube every Friday. Uh, search for Vox Power 373 and look for the BGK8 show with Dominion and Epic. Uh, we currently have spaces in the studio where people can actually come and participate in the live studio audience. Today Woo-hoo! we didn't have anybody. We had our producer, we had coats, and we had a bag. So that's what we had tonight. So and you can call in. Right, you can call in 240-719-2560, but nobody called in. But right. listen, I'm gonna need y'all to call in. So Kendra, uh, Sean, uh, Michael, Martin, I'm gonna need y'all to call in. Okay, but anyway, 
So if you're trying to reach me on Facebook, you can reach me on Epic Onyx, or you can find me at Epic Onyx on Facebook. You can also reach me at Epic Onyx One um, on Twitter, and you can also reach me or find me on Instagram at I am Epic Onyx. So Dominion, where can they reach you at? You can reach me by trailway. You can reach me on an airplane. You can reach me if you can. Anyway, so you can reach me on Twitter. <laughs> you can reach me at Dom Onyx on Twitter and Instagram. My Facebook is facebook.com slash Dom Onyx. And you can reach me on my website, which is www.domonyx.com, where you can read my... You can read my archived column at the moment, Dominion's Opinions, and get information on my book, Alex and Alonzo, which, which will ultimately one day feature um, a silver-haired um, glory hole attendant. I, I can work with that. <laughs> I, I can work with that. I can definitely work with that. Like, here's your towel, here's your key, you're in room number 34. You need some lube. We have lube, we lube have packets, stickers, or flip flops, and towels. and towels, and everything else. Please I was thinking about going to communion this weekend. It's on Saturday night after the something DC else is going on on Saturday. Something. Oh well, the book downtown, the books, the book stuff for. Um, but that's all. Michelle Obama but, ain't gonna be near the yeah, Ku Club. But, uh, Michelle, Michelle Obama was <laughs> walking to the Crew Club like, "Hello!" <laughs> like, right, give me five minutes. I'll be right back. Give me five right. minutes. I need to finish this off. Anyway, right. But anyway, anyway, so anyway, kids, thank you all for coming out. Thank God you all bless for you and good, good night. night. So next week, mwah, we're going to have our Thanksgiving show. So we're going to talk about uh, oh, yeah. our favorite Thanksgiving foods and what we're going to do for Thanksgiving. Because you, you know, know what, we're planning to go to New York City and carry. We we I'm really going to talk about some old Thanksgiving things that or things that happened at Thanksgiving with the family that were just out of control. You know what? Well, anyway, we'll I've talk had a about it next of those week. Stories, so. so, but anyway, thank you all. Have a good night. See you next week. Bye. Bye.